Look at this marvelous environment. Now close your eyes and open them again. You can most likely see a huge difference. But can you put a word on what has disappeared? Most people answer, you remove the cracks from the wall. Some foliage disappeared. Some textures on the wall got changed. But do you know what the common ground of them all are? They all are an illusion. A graphical illusion to make you see depth, material properties, and full-scale environment change, mood, wear and tear, all without adding major fidelity and a performance increase? Well, I'm of course talking about the magic of decals. Video game graphics is all about adding fidelity, while keeping performance cost as low as possible. That's why we sheet a lot. We render the entire sky as a cube, we make flat squares always face the camera, to fake foliage. We even create an illusion of bumps and roughness without adding any extra geometry with normal add roughness maps. And decals are the one trick that's everywhere, yet barely documented nor mentioned. And when you find something about decals, it's often referred to as deferred decals. That's because it's one of the most common way to render them. There is also the forward rendered way. Before we dive into that, let's first break down what decals are and why they matter. Decals are simple geometry, like boxes. A box only has 8 edge points, meaning a simple draw call is all we need. Yet, they blend very seamlessly into the environment. The challenge is projecting what's inside of the decal on the surface you want without bleeding into unwanted areas behind or next to it. We solve this in two steps. First, with depth testing. We compare each pixel's depth against the scene's depth and process only those pixels with a greater depth, ensuring they fall within the decal's bounds. The second one is the raster culling. To make sure only the correct side of the box is rendered, we enable front face culling. But here is the problem. What happens when we step inside the box? Well, it disappears. We don't see it at all. That's because now we're culling the wrong side of it. To fix this, we switch to back face culling instead making sure the decals are always visible wherever we are. And with that, we can actually already draw a solid quad onto a surface. One step closer. But now the real deal of the decals. How do we get the decal texture to line up properly with the surface? Well, it's with texture projecting. To make a decal look natural, we need to know exactly where a pixel is in 3D space. We do this by transforming the pixel's word position into decal space. And just like whenever we want into someone's space, we multiply by the inverse of their matrix, using the inverse of the decal projection matrix. This lets us calculate coordinates as if the decal is wrapped around the surface. Now it fits perfectly. But decals can do so much more than color. They can affect the whole surface underneath. This is where things get really interesting. Decals can modify normals and roughness to create fake bumps like footprint. Roughness and metalness to make surfaces look rusty, dusty or wet. If you have ever seen a puddle appear in a game while it's storming, well, it's probably just a decal that's modifying the material properties underneath. Modifying normals might sound pretty simple, but spoilers, it kind of isn't. The normal problem and the fix. Normally, we just read from the normal buffer and write to it. But in graphics, reading and writing to the texture, big no-no. So, how do we get around this? There are two main ways. We can always brute force with just copying the entire normal buffer into a different texture and then using that texture. And that works, but we're still missing two main components, which I will mention soon. We can also reconstruct the normals from the depth. We always want to write to the normal map. So instead of reading from the normal map as well, we just read from the depth instead. We estimate the normals using depth differences. We sample the depth around a pixel. We calculate the difference to get a tangent using DDX and DDY. And then we use the cross product to get the normal. This is fast, but it comes with artifacts. At object edges, depth changes too fast, leading to broken normals. If we could instead sample a bigger region, and use those values to estimate instead, we would probably get less artifacts. And that is exactly what we will do. A common method is using finite differences, where P is the word position derived from the depth. This works until you hit the depth discontinuity, just like we mentioned before. 
If you've ever noticed decals becoming stretched or jagged at edges, that's because the decal is sampling from the depth, and the depth between the two pixels are so different, well, it becomes a sharp jump in the surface. Instead of blindly using neighboring pixels, using 5 sampling strategy fixes this. Inspired by Hummel's SDA method, it samples the depth in multiple directions, it rejects the bad samples that belongs to the wrong surface, and it uses the best depth values to reconstruct a clean normal. No more decal stretching, no more jagged edges, it's just a smooth projection. And what we wanted to fix was the normals. Well, we still use the same method for the normals. And the artifacts just become lesser. And now we've got a nice decal that's projecting onto the environment. And about one second into playing the game and running around, we kind of instantly realize what is the next problem here. Since decals read from the depth and project onto that depth, they don't discriminate, they project onto any surface, including anything maybe running in between, like the player character. We might want mud on the ground, but not on the plants. Or even worse, our character walks in front and suddenly, whoops, there is a crack on his head. Not great. To fix this, we use stencil buffers. We assign an ID to objects that shouldn't receive decals. We're rendering the decals, we check the stencil value, and discard pixels on those objects. Another problem solved. Now let's get back to the question I asked before. Can't we just render decals the forward way? Technically, yes. But for years, this really wasn't viable in a scalable way. Well, because rendering anything forward really means for each object's pixels, we look through all lights and all decals and do the shading inside of them. That's really not viable since objects overlap each other. A better way to do this is each pixel, only once, go through all decals. To do this, deferred rendering is introduced by storing material properties in a gbuffer. So lights and decals could be applied in a later pass. But there is a twist. Forward rendering is making a comeback. Acceleration structure are getting buffed each day. And some wise people realize that why can't we just use the same acceleration structure, in this case the clusters, that already stores the lights but instead also have them store decals. This means that we can now cluster decals and we can actually render them in a forward way. Instead of checking every decal for every object, we group them into clusters and only check relevant ones. This means forward rendering can handle both light and decals more efficiently. In some cases, it might even be deferred. So, are we entering an era where forward rendering dominates again? Well, maybe. But what we do know is that today's topic, the decals, really shine in a deferred pipeline. IdTech showcases with both Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal how this can be pulled off. They don't just cluster lights, but decals too. Each cluster store indices to decals, stored in a texture atlas or accessed via bindless resources. During shading, the pixel figure out which cluster it's in, looks up the list of decals and samples them. It's fast, scalable, and works great with both forward and deferred paths. Doom Eternal even pushes this further with mesh decals. Decals authored into the mesh itself. Instead of being placed freely in the world, they're baked into the asset. Each mesh stores an ID map for its decal, which the shader uses to sample and blend properties like normal, roughness, and color. Tech like these are why decals have become a staple in adding details with performance in mind. Yet, I see them very underused and documented, especially in beginner-friendly game dev with Unity and Unreal. Decals are one of the most powerful, yet underrated techniques in game development. They fake depth, wear, and material changes. They can add wetness or fake footsteps, all without adding complex geometry. But as simple as they look, under the hood, they rely on depth and stencil tricks, G-buffer blending, even modern acceleration structures. So next time you see a crack on a wall or mud splashes on a car in a video game, Remember, it's all just an illusion, and now you know exactly how it works. And as I said before, decals really shine in a deferred pipeline. That's why I think you should watch this next video, which covers deferred rendering in detail.